<laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh my gosh. Hi, this is Christy Matthews. And I am Amanda Ashton Booth. And we are the Cybropreneurs. And what a, a entrepreneurish moment we've been just having, hasn't it been? Oh my gosh. Sorry, we're a little late, folks. We were just having some uh, technical problems. We uh, were trying out a new platform and we had to jump back over here to Be Live. So thank you, Be Live. Appreciate you being here. So, <laughs> yes. Anyway, so. Uh, Anyway, we have some uh, great topics to share with you today, and um, hopefully this, we won't have too many more difficulties here. So, uh, <laughs> we might as well go ahead and start with our fibro fog moment of the week, huh? Probably I'll just let moment you of the start. Yours is a very fresh one, so <laughs> I'll let you start. Mine's was um, involving a cup last week, so um, yeah, you this week. Where's my damn coffee is what my fibro moment is. <laughs> I just poured a cup of coffee, and it's just like, where the hell did I put it? I have no idea where I put the coffee. <laughs> I went ahead I and put to, it. I even had to make sure that she actually made the coffee. And she isn't looking for an invisible cup of coffee because I know I've done that before. <laughs> well, and uh, I actually was, uh, we have a prop that we're going to show you on a little bit later into the show. And as I was showing Amanda my prop, I realized I had half of my prop on and I'm going, oh my gosh, I don't have my prop on. So I need to, I ran through the house, grabbed my cup of coffee and I have no idea where I put my coffee. But I got my props on, so what can I say? <laughs> That's my fibro fog moment of the moment. <laughs> well, your, your, your one um, will we'll make your one the kind of funny one, the upbeat one. My one is a, a bit embarrassing and made me feel a bit stupid. And there's always those ones that make you feel a bit silly in the moment and, and deflates you a little bit as well. So it takes a little piece of your soul. Yeah. Um, I had I had a a, a, a traumatic day the other day and um, I was a, a hospital appointment hospital appointment and uh, the it was um, the gynecologist I was speaking to um, for good old women's problems and he asked me um, which what every woman should really know is um, the the day of my last period and my menstrual cycle and everything and I was like. I have no idea. I goes, but I do know that I'm due my period around the 11th. It was my mother-in-law that told me that. <laughs> and I'm so stupid. Um, and I was explaining, I was having to then explain to um, the, the doctor, look, I have fibromyalgia, um, so I seem a bit kind of dipsy doty at times because I just can't remember things. So that was my silly um, kind of oops. Yeah. Keep your brain. <laughs> you know, it is frustrating, and uh, I've got another one. Can I give another one? Yeah. And I think most people can relate to this. And it, it, it happened from, with somebody that I happen to really like and, and know them fairly well. And I think that this person may have just been having a bad day, maybe just didn't even realize what they did. But, and, and, I, and I have to say, I think having fibromyalgia makes us a little bit, a little, just a little self-conscious about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, no surprise, I've been having some difficulties the last couple of weeks, just struggling with a few things and just trying to get some things done. And I've been in this zero level marketing mode where I'm just getting the bare minimum done, the most important things done. And everything that just didn't have to get done was not getting done. And so I was asked when this particular thing was going to get done. And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of going through a, a little bit of a, uh, um, uh, what I call electrolyte imbalance, which was true. And I'll, I'll have to share that with you on, a, on a, another, uh, maybe next week sometime, what that was all about. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me a little while to figure it out, and but it really knocked me down, and it caused a series of things to happen with me. And all I got was, oh. And that proverbial, oh, just sat with me for a while. It's just like, you know, that is the one thing that I, I just, it just is like putting fingernails to chalkboard. Mm-hmm. Now, back in the old chalkboard days is like that is just like running them down the chalkboard and it just it's like screeching in the back of my head and it, it just and I know I know it people don't mean it and I know it wasn't sent it said to be intentional uh, it was probably said to be motivational but that wasn't motivating to me I'm probably my own self-motivator. I don't need anybody putting a foot up my behind to get me motivated. I'm pretty good about that myself. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, that was my fibro, my second fibro moment of the week. I'm going to close this window a little bit because the uh, garbage trucks are coming. Excuse me for just a second. There we go. A little bit less noisy. Sorry about that, guys. So, anyway, um, kind of interested, how many of you guys have been taking uh, different types of medications? Amanda, what kind of medications have you tried down the years for, for dealing with the fibromyalgia? Well, um, I was in my teens when I started taking uh, antidepressants. Um, and I wasn't stable in taking them either. Um, I, I would, I would stop taking them, and then I would be given other ones to try, and then I, I was just like really all over the place with medications. Um, I when I became uh, diagnosed uh, with fibromyalgia. Uh, in 2011, I was sat down by the doctor um, to speak about the importance of taking uh, the the antidepressants, and I was put on venlafaxine, um, and that was supposed to help with pain and sleeping and weight loss. Which actually, my weight went piled on when I took them. I was like that one percent that it has a total different um, effect. Uh, I was on tramadol um, for pain. I was on, I've been on diclofenac um, uh, for uh, inflammation. Mm -hmm. I have been on gabapentin, uh, anti-seizure medication to help with the twitches and the spasms in the muscles. However, when I stopped taking the gabapentin, and um, when I stopped taking the venlafaxine, that's when the spasms stopped. Yes, it was the venlafaxine that was causing the spasms. Right. Um, also, Fetulium D3, which is uh, a vitamin D, um, and I, I, I would bore you to tears with the medication because I'm, I'll be here all year. But um, there has been lots of other ones. Those are the main ones, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, and there's been there uh, as well the tramexamic acid, which is um that's to help with uh the the time of the month. I see. Um, I see. As well, yep. Okay. Um, I kind of went down, went down the same the course. Oh, well. getting some feedback. Let's see. Is that me or you? Let me turn this down. Is that a little better? Okay. Oh, just to add, I'm on none now. Good. I'm on none now. None of them. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> when I first started, you know, um, they started off with an antidepressant, but I don't think it was just because the doctor I started with was pretty cool. I was pretty upset emotionally. So an antidepressant was something that we both agreed on. But he knew that there was more going on. So he did some things like making sure my thyroid was under, uh, was properly managed and things like that, which was not. And so he did a lot of baseline things to make sure that there were not other things contributing to the fibromyalgia problems. And that before he was comfortable diagnosing fibromyalgia. 
And then when that happened, you know, I went through, um, uh, first of all, because I had an injury, a neck injury. So, of course, I was put on uh, opioids. And that was a course that I had stayed on for quite some time. And then, uh, in addition to that, taking the opioids, I was on some Balta. And some Balta, uh, let's see, they started off with uh, Celexa and opioids. And then I had, of course, some uh, muscle relaxants and a whole bunch of other things that I don't even remember at the time. I did do the uh, gabapentin called Neurontin here. And then over a period of time, um, I'm going to say about six years ago, my doctor started tapering off of the opioids because I was pretty upset about having to pee in a cup. They were getting to a point to where you had to start peeing in the cup before they would give you another opioid uh, prescription. And I wasn't even taking the opioids as prescribed. I was cutting them in half because I didn't want to become addicted to them. So I so, felt I felt so, like a criminal. I really did. So they were basically um, acting like they had turned you into a junkie, really. Well, no. Well, I didn't want to be turned into a junkie, but they were treating me as if I was an abuser, and they treated everybody who was on opioids. I wasn't singled out. Everybody who was given an opioid had to sign a contract that their urine would be wow. examined for drug use. And uh, because they didn't want to have people dying on, you know, under their watch because, you know, people were taking opioids and other things and they were ending up in the emergency room and many of them were dying. And uh, that's just something that they didn't want to have happen with their patients. So that I was very offended by that because I've always been compliant with my medication use. And, and I was just, I'm going, this is just not going to fly with me. I mean, I feel like, you know, I haven't even been in a court of law to have a judge tell me, hey, you got to go pee in a cup. And I'm having my doctor tell me I have to do this. This is not okay. So then my doctor says, well, let's try tramadol. You're not going to have to pee in a cup with tramadol. I'll go, okay. Because tramadol doesn't give you the, um, the, that feel good feeling from the opioids as you would get from, uh, Tramadol here has um, has been a kind of a black mark type thing where we're only allowed a certain amount at a time. Um, you know, you used to get a pack of them and then they, I think it was about two years ago, two and a half years ago that um, came into play. Yeah, uh, here too. You know, my doctor, when she got me on Tramadol, she says it's, it's a... Uh, what it does is it's still an opioid derivative, but it's not the um, the main opioid component like it is with oxycodone or Vicodins and that type of thing. But nonetheless, if you go into somebody, uh, maybe a physician's assistant or somebody like that, they're going to say, oh, it's an opioid. And so still, you know, you're dealing with that stigma. So I got off of that. And then I went and I tried Lyrica. Lyrica made me want to eat a cow. Uh, I, gave, I gained like 45 pounds on Lyrica. That didn't do a darn thing for me, and it made me a little cuckoo. And then I tried Savella. That didn't do a darn bit of good for me. And then I went and did amitriptyline. And I got to say, amitriptyline, even though it's an antidepressant, it worked the best. And um, it's an old, old drug. It's in the tricycline um, antidepressant category. Great. But I gained weight. It was a very slow weight gainer. So the weight gain I had from the Lyrica and having it compound with the amitriptyline, something had to give. So, and just recently up until this year, I was able to start shedding those pounds off. And we've shared that with you on another show already. But that's been my journey. And now I am off. Most of the medications, I still take a couple of other residual type of things like with the digestive issues that we'll talk about on another show, but I'm down to just, just a couple of medications now. How do you feel, um, do you, like for me personally, I feel like I am more alive 
Oh, oh definitely. Like, it was like, um, oh yeah. I was like a zombie. Yes. You know, there was no emotion, no, you know, like the emotions were guarded. And if there was any emotion, it was just crying. I slept for four or five hours a day. Oh, I and then I'd sit up and just struggle to get through a few things. And I'd go back and sleep another, I don't know, 10 hours a night. It was just a horrible, it was just a horrible existence. Mm. And I, yeah, alive is definitely a good way to put it. Definitely felt like I got my life back getting off those drugs. It, it was just freeing. And um, the drugs I got off of was the amitriptyline, the uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, the omeprazole to protect the stomach. And I'm working on getting off of the IBS medication. Woohoo! That's amazing. Yes. yes, it is very good. So, you know, a lot of people uh, are using uh, medical marijuana to treat their fibromyalgia. And I just, I, I talked to somebody the other day and they reminded me of this because, you know, I've also, I, I'm a big believer in cannabis. Um, I believe in it. I actually used it uh, a couple of years ago. Hi, Donna. Thank you. You definitely have that bounce in your step. <laughs> Thanks. That's my best friend there. Excellent. Um, I'm a big believer in cannabis. As long as it's, you know, not for the purpose of getting stoned, so to speak, but mm. for relaxation and all that. But there is a big stigma with using medical marijuana and the smoking and the smell of it and all of that. But I'm kind of more of a proponent of CBD oil and the, the cannabinoid. I can let's see if I can say it. The cannabinoids, I believe. The the CBD oil is um, the the difference is it's not giving a stoned effect because it's right. missing the THC. So Correct. That, that that's the thing because um, it's the THC which is killing people's brain cells when they're sitting getting stoned, you know, all the time, that, that's the difference. I mean, there's a, a lot of controversy over um, a CBD oil. Um, however, even in the UK now, there's a chemist down the road um, and it's actually selling the CBD. Um, people just aren't aware of exactly what it is and what the difference is. I yes. did speak um, the other week there, actually, Christy. I spoke to the owner of the chemist because he comes into the community centre. Um, I spoke to him and I did ask him. Obviously, he cannot um, disclose like whether it works or anything like that. But I did ask him cleverly, how well does it sell? And that was my answer. And he says, well, it sells very well. So yes. it's obviously doing something um, good. Uh, and it, all you do is you put a drop, you put a couple of drops a day um, or at certain times a day, two, three times a day under your tongue. And that's it. Now, have you heard in the UK about the, um, it was a young lady that was a little girl, she's about three years old, having repeated uh, epilepsy, epileptic seizures. I mean, she was having, I don't know, multiple seizures a day. This poor girl, she was probably going to die of epileptic seizures. And her mother was, um, I believe her mother's a pharmacist. And she uh, had somebody making her daughter CBD oil. And she was just at wit's ends, and she, she did a lot of research. She and her husband had decided to try this. And the daughter's epileptic seizures had started to reduce down to one to two a day. Wow. I mean, she was having, I, I can't even count how many. This poor girl, it, it seemed like she was in more epileptic seizures than she was at rest. And stress can trigger that as well. So it's the CBD not. would give a calm as well. Well, it's something they have done so much research on it because of all of the properties in it. And this is why I think here in the United States, if they're softening up on the research uh, around uh, uh, industrial hemp. And, you know, because it's still here in the United States uh, considered as a class one controlled substance, some of the research is still a little bit difficult to get out on it. But the CBD oil, 
um, it has been it has gone around like you know viral here in this country about how well it has helped um, especially those with epilepsy and this particular young lady is is like the she was the nexus for making change and changing people's hearts and minds to the attitude of CBD oil and it is now, I, you know, I don't know how much the claims are, if this is directly responsible or not, but it has been known to help people with cancer, people who are having epilepsy. Uh, even the medical marijuana doctor that I spoke with had, had told me personally, because I would rather see you take CBD oil, uh, because he had said in his research and the things that he is reading, he'd rather have his patients take the CBD oil rather than smoke, vaporize, or do anything else with the plant in and of itself. He would rather have the extracts be used by the patients because he has seen enough research and convinced enough that is given enough help. So I use, I, uh, I use hemp cooking oil. I use a uh, hemp protein powder. Um, all organic. Um, I, I, I live by the stuff. I love it. I use it for everything. <laughs> My daughter uses quite a few hemp products too. And you know, back in the day, you know, hemp was used as as canvas. I mean, canvas tents, canvas clothing. I mean, it was very uh, canvas ropes. You know, it was used in everything until there was this. Uh, you know, we can go into history. We won't do that here, but. Uh, why they they you know got rid of it and started using less uh, less I'm going to say inferior type of products compared to cannabis and I, I'm glad to see it coming back around. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just uh, was kind of curious about your thoughts on that because um, I think that there's some good things coming down the horizon if they would just release or maybe recategorize. Uh, this particular substance so that the researchers can really do the research that is owed to it. Hi, Gary. Big Pharma killed hemp. It sure did. I agree High with five. that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. So, anyway, we discussed that enough. <laughs> Should we move on? <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, this other thing's kind of a pet peeve of mine, you know, as marketers, um, you know, we love looking at marketing opportunities and being online marketers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with finding an affiliate product that you believe in and you want to market. Maybe even like CBD oil, you might find something like that that you wish to market and if it's a product you believe in. Well, there's a big movement going on here in the United States and maybe uh, across the pond in your area too, Amanda. Um, but here's the thing that that bothers me with this. And I think as marketers, we need to be true to to our, our marketing message, especially us with fibromyalgia who are very sensitive to ingredients that are in our products. Mm -hmm. This one company is out there saying that they're saving people, you know, they're helping people make money and they're making their homes toxic free and so forth. And I was pretty excited when this opportunity came my way too. And the number one, their number one product, best selling product happened to be a petrolatum product. And guess what? I am allergic to petrolatum products. Petrolatum is not a toxic free natural product. It is a refined product. It, it is petroleum. And even though a lot of our um, medical products are made from petrolatum or mineral oils or things like that that are used in medicine, they are not natural. They are refined, come out of the earth, have made and been made in a refinery and they maybe have been purified as much as possible, but it does not mean that they're not toxic free. And I'm a very good example of that. I've had my, my abdominal wall reconstructed because I had a hernia patch in there and it kind of, uh, I was very allergic to it. And after a number of years, I had to have the whole thing reconstructed. And so when I heard this marketing message, 
Um, I was very disturbed by that because the company is out promoting itself saying that they can save you a lot of t money because you're using concentrated products on the same things that you can buy at Walmart and um, other big box stores that we're all shopping at anyway and save ourselves some money. And But they're using high quality products, but they're working around um, lawful marketing uh, labeling. And, and in this particular case, although um, petrolatum is used like in Vaseline and Vicks VapoRub and things like that, and it might be used in the medical world, I mean, it, people are still allergic to that stuff. And I had this person come on and try to tell me uh, from this company who was not a medical director, who was not part of the research team, just to try to tell me, well, hey, a lot of people buy this stuff. But she had no idea how it might be affecting people. And, and you know what? I had no idea that petrolatum was causing me a severe internal allergy either. So folks, I just wanted to share this with you. You know, with us as fibromyalgia patients, um, there are just little things that can set us off. And uh, it could be scents, uh, it could be taste, it could be just t uh, things that we're using in our house to, to clean things. So we have a couple things that we wanted to share with you that are non I, um, Yeah, Could I ahead. comment on the, the marketing tip? Absolutely. Um, with, uh, to do with um, products and things. Yes. Um, for anybody who either has fibromyalgia or somebody that's a network marketer, okay, so this aims to both. For the person um, that is a marketer, when you see that somebody has fibromyalgia because they've shared something, Good point. this is my pet bug bear it just irritates the living daylights out of me we're not targets okay and um, we're not cash machines you know we're not we're human okay now if we want to use a product or if we want something then there is better ways to um, have us see this product. Now, if you're a network marketer and you have a product that you think may help somebody, then learn how to market it well, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because if your product's really good, you'll be marketing it in the right way. And if I see that it's good enough, and if, you're, if you are building a um, relationship with me, then I will sure see it. Because you're doing, you're sharing it in such a way, like on your wall, attraction marketing. Um, but to message somebody, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, in, I'm not angry. If anybody's watching this and they know that they've done this to me, I'm not angry. I'm just sharing this because um, you don't know if nobody tells you. Okay, um, always needs to be somebody that mentions it for you to understand that. Um, but don't go and message somebody because it's really, it, it it's not very nice. Um, constantly having people message, oh, you suffer from fibromyalgia. Well, no, my, my answer to it automatically is, no, I don't suffer. I manage mine very well. I'm medication free. Thank you very much. And that is my answer. So I kind of shut down. Whereas um, if, uh, if somebody's sharing a post on the wall, I might actually write under the post and say, oh, tell me more about it just because I'm intrigued to know more and because of the way and I respect the way that they've done it right okay so I'll respect that um but you need to earn that respect now people that uh, that have fibromyalgia for you guys um if somebody messages you uh, or if you're sharing stuff and you're getting 10 billion messages because you will if you're sharing that you have fibromyalgia because there's so many people in health and wellness now businesses you're going to get this every day don't just open your purse strings for everybody right do your research find out if this product's right for you find out that the reviews are real reviews right um, uh, just be careful in um, how you're just willy-nilly spending your money so that's my 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 input there 
So true. You know, this is what why I, I caught on to this particular product offering too, because I think the model is great and the people that are behind it are great. It's just that, you know, it's kind of like, there's a leader and a bunch of sheep that are following along and maybe not really looking be at the ingredients of all of the products that they really are marketing. And the marketing message is really not a hundred percent true to what is in the products. All the other products are very good. So I don't want to be negative about it. I just want to be, I just want to be true in about what we're marketing and have integrity about what we're marketing. There's so much out there that what we can market. So, and we have a lot of choices. So we might as well choose the ones that we can be, have integrity with, right? Okay. The more we have integrity with, uh, the, the better we feel about ourselves and the more money that we can make and the more people that we can help. So that's what it's all about. So we want to help people. We want to help people, you know, uh, feel better and, and hopefully uh, make their pocketbooks feel a little bit better too, you know. So um, it, it, it's a win all the way around. So kind of along that same uh, vein, you know, how about your feet feeling better? I mean, my goodness. How do you feel about memory foam? I mean, oh, my gosh. Well, yes. <laughs> it's very hard to get my feet up like that. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> because of that i lost my coffee <laughs> you know so you know, we have <laughs> yes. and we have um these are my right these are my comfy um you know ones that are more like slippers okay then i have my old tatty ones that i've used so much and i just shove them on because they're comfortable and they're scruffy and i don't need to worry about them getting trashed if i'm doing anything and then i have <laughs> my um nice uh, black ones which can nice. go with pretty much anything and they're my newer ones they're they're very, very nice good. yeah i didn't go grab all of mine i just got these new these ones right here because i i wear these out and, and you know they last quite some time but oh, yeah i don't know amanda how do you I just kind of ran across these when I finally put them on uh, what, a couple of years ago, I guess when these first came out, it was like, oh my gosh, these are great. It's like walking on clouds. <laughs> oh, they are. You know, and I've been, you know, I don't go cheap on shoes. I like good, comfortable shoes because I you can't wear any others. When your feet hurt, your whole body hurts. So. I can't wear any any other shoes. Um, I I had these ones for a year, um, and then I tried to put on um other shoes in absolute agonizing pain. I can't wear nothing but Skechers. Um, yeah, my not a fashion statement, but boy, they really are. Uh, you know, they're very comfortable. There's some memory foam shoes that are actual shoes. I've been looking yes. at as well. Yes. Um, that's my next on the list. <laughs> yeah, I think memory foam. You know, they're finding out um, that it's really. Um, it, I guess it's just the type of foam that you know. It, it's. You know, it's like Tempur-Pedic foam. You know, for sleeping. You know that way it, it it can hold uh the weight for a long period of time and then and rebound and then the next day come back and do it again and rebound and be able to do that for a very very long time because she's also um a chair that i know of um i can't remember what the designer was called but it's like 800 800 pounds or something and very expensive but it's a big memory foam chair and it just looks oh. like heaven <laughs> oh gosh i don't know you know just taking the I don't know about you, Amanda, but sometimes uh, before finding these kinds of shoes, walking would be like vibration all the way up the body. And it is, and it causes pain um, within the joints um, and everything, you know, uh, because it, it does the, when there's vibration. That's why um, we can't go on, you know, the vibration plates because that will not pull our joints out. That oh, yes. anybody that has fibromyalgia that's watching this, never, if you're in a gym or anything and you see that big vibration thing, stay away. 
stay away because you just have to walk off a curb the wrong way and you pull a joint okay so just stay away from those things how about those little bumps as you're coming out of the grocery store and you got your grocery cart you know those little bumps knock your shoulders out it can knock your shoulders out that they sure can but you know what i'm talking about those little speed yeah. bumps? well not the humps but they're like little bumps the ones you're pushing your shopping cart so it doesn't get away from you I cannot push my shopping cart over there. It's like it's so much vibration. I have to kind of walk around the side of it and push it with one hand and just kind of give it a shove. And so I shove my cart out into the street so that I can get across the parking lot because just getting out of the store and through those little bumps, it's just mm -hmm. the vibration is just horrible. So getting that vibration off my feet is just such a dream. Oh, what a great thing. Anyway, memory foam shoes. I'm glad that was a great topic that you brought up for today because if you haven't tried these memory foam shoes but by Skechers, right? Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I also have uh, something else, a little tip. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I mentioned this because I uh, was using, and I know I've mentioned on uh, other shows, um, I have mentioned that I was using a heat lotion, but it was taken off the shelf. Yeah. I've mentioned that I was using it, but it was taken off the shelf because there was something in it that wasn't allowed in the UK. So it was removed from the shelf. Um, uh, so I started using the deep heat. Now, I've mentioned that uh, as well in the show that I was using deep heat. Now, all of a sudden, I had a reaction that was a... Uh, like months and months I've been using deep heat and I've had no problems uh, but all of a sudden uh, I have had a reaction of it's like rubbing hot chili uh, on my body and it burns and whatever um, but I also tried another a sample of something down in the the chemist that I picked up uh, the other day and that did not uh, sit well with me um at all either that caused me a burning chili burning sensation and brought me out in a big rash um it's something my picture of a muscle on the front of it or something and um, i can't remember it starts with the p but the the aloe heat lotion is back on the market and um i've put my order in uh i'm waiting for it to arrive and um, because i'll tell you something it is natural um, as far as I'm aware, it is natural. Um, now, Christy, uh, you can double check that if there is anything in it, that, because you're more aware of the things that are in things. Um, so if you check that and you see anything, just drop a message on the page and like refer back to this topic. But as far as I'm aware, it's natural. It has that one thing removed out of it. Um, but it is, oh, it is just heaven on the body. It's just absolute heaven on the body, and it can be used for it. It can be used for headaches. You can rub it on the temples and everything. And um, you can also use it if you're a mother with a baby or a toddler on the soles of the baby's feet, and it soothes them and helps them relax to go to sleep. And um, that's been well known, uh, and a lot of people have used it for that that as well. And um, so there's a lot of uses. And um, also you can use it for colds and stuff. There's there's lots of tips that you can use this for. It's just absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, I'll, I'll share an, another post on that uh, over the next couple of days on the page um, so as you can have a look-see. Um, I will share a, 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 a link where you can pick some up. Um, if you are in another country, though, um, just pop your country below and say, I'm in this country, can you advise? And then I'll give you the right um, direction for which country to buy it from. That's very good. Uh, Michelle is talking about Tiger Balm. Tiger Balm is very, very good. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. You know, and you got to work with what, what does work. Tiger Balm, um, it's really strong, though, and, and it does work, but you got it. It's like um, when we were talking last week about using salves or liniments and that type of thing. Um, about how to get them to penetrate in beyond into the skin and tiger balm I have found for me personally is one of those things that does penetrate and uh, does 
absorb into the skin and gets into the deeper la layers uh, more so than some others. And I, you know, I think that might be what works really well with the, the aloe uh, heat heat uh, rub that you're talking about. I can't, I can't wait for that. To arrive. I need to. So very <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if Amanda shared with you, but I think what was happening with, she's been swimming a lot lately and swimming so good for uh, fibromyalgia. And she goes, I don't know what the heck's going on. I've been using this stuff. It had tea tree oil in it, right? Um, I can't remember what's all in it. Yeah. And she goes, all of a sudden, this stuff is like so hot, I can't get it off. And, and so we were talking and not. I had a cold cloth. I had a cold cloth on my on my back, and I was not. I soaked a towel because I was in a mad dash. It was like burning like hot chili, and I'm straight to the sink with a towel in the sink, and then I'm like this on my back and everything. Then I had the pseudo creme out to try and cool it down, and because everybody was in their bed, and um, I had to use like the back of a, a plastic palette to rub the pseudo creme all over my back. <laughs> I was in a right state. <laughs> Hey, you just got a testimonial here from Michelle. She says she uh, used the uh, aloe heat lotion on all of her, on the whole of her legs for the restless leg syndrome, and she got an hour of relief. So there you go. It's really, really good yes. stuff. Sometimes an hour of relief is just all that we need. Yeah. To get, you know, oh, right? Thanks for sharing that, Michelle. That's awesome. It's awesome. So. Um, you know, getting back on, uh, I forgot to, I had a fibro fog moment here, but uh, talking about the, um, you know, the products earlier, uh, we have a couple of little concoctions that we'll share up on the page so that if you want to make some uh, uh, toxic free type of cleaning products at home for you, you don't have to really worry about, we'll leave them up in the page for you. Mm -hmm. So, how would you guys feel? What would you ask if you had access to a pain specialist? If you had access to a pain specialist, what would you ask that person? Well, we're going to be having that happen here really soon. We've got some people that we're going to be bringing on who specialize in treating people with fibromyalgia. And uh, they're going to be coming on and joining us. So we would love to have uh, our audience here ask some questions that we can, you know, uh, get to them so that they can be prepared to come on and share with you the answers to the questions that you have. And um, if we can, for maybe we can even extend the show to where they can actually answer some of the questions that you have live. So we'll yes. have to figure out and see how much time you're going to be able to spend with us. You know, uh, being that uh, Amanda and I have an eight-hour uh, time difference, so uh, just getting this show on is a bit of a challenge. So uh, having our guests come on, we might have a little bit more of a time. We may have to record the program and bring it to you uh, and, and uh, stream it live to you that way as a recording. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll get it all figured out. But if you guys could share us, share with us some of your questions that you would like us to make sure we get to the pain specialist. We would love to, to share them with them and, and get the answers for you. you know, so we're very excited that the show is catching on and that there are uh, healers out there that want to come on and share with you and they want to help you out. I mean, this is just awesome. I'm just feeling so uh, so blessed to have this. You know, it's exciting. And, it's exciting. It, this, this all began with a just a little uh, conversation. Well, actually, our conversations little? No, uh, <laughs> they're never <a> little. <laughs> never have a little conversation. And that was the whole point of the show because we have such large um, in-depth conversations. Yeah. We just knew, you know, this is great content. I wonder how people would feel if they could be a fly in the wall and that's where this came from. That's what brought us to you right now. <laughs> right. Yes. So anyway, we, we would love to have your input and any input, whether it's for a pain specialist or how uh, we can make this show better. Uh, we would love to hear your input because uh, this is all for you. This isn't about us. This is about 
giving back to you and helping others because there are so many people just like us who, you know, we had to come out of our shell. We, we all had different lives doing different things. And then this thing happened and uh, somehow it just set us back on our keisters and uh, kept us from moving on with our life. And now we found a way to express ourselves and be able to move on and, uh, and kind of live with fibromyalgia and not suffer with it. We live with it and exactly. learn how to put it in the right suffering. perspective. That's right. So we yeah. want to teach people to manage rather than suffer. Exactly. You know, too many people are suffering rather than managing it. And the reason why they're not managing it is because they don't know how and they're not taught how. Now, Michelle, she's talking about a probiotic capsule. And so, Michelle, are you talking about that your fibromyalgia symptoms are practically gone because of the probiotic? Or is it more of the digestive issues related to the fibromyalgia that are practically gone? Could you clarify that? Oh, the IBS. Great. I agree with you. Probiotics are very important. You know, we're going to be talking a little bit about the digestive issues next week. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. Really appreciate that. So excellent. I have something really great I can offer for um, for a digestive as well, actually. So that will be a good, good topic. Yeah, it will. Mm -hmm. Well, it's getting to be the uh, time to... Uh, wrap the show up and uh, if there's any closing thoughts my friend um actually i just want to say and i say it every week uh, apart from thank you everybody who has supported us so far but also if you uh, could do us a big favor and uh, share this stream out uh, with your friends um, help us share the word, help us share awareness, help us help others. Yes. Um, so you will then be playing your part as well. But also, if you know anybody that uh, is a male yes. that has fibromyalgia, we're still looking for that person or people, um, gentlemen that have fibromyalgia uh, that are either um, entrepreneurs or just they have fibromyalgia but male entrepreneurs with fibromyalgia um, will probably have a little bit more confidence in coming on the show um, but uh, if you know of anybody please 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 send them our way and uh, we'd love to hear from uh, from the, the guys as well out there because they're kind of in the shadows and we want to bring them out as well yes Thank you for your comments, Michelle. Really appreciate that. Appreciate you supporting us. Thank you, yeah. Donna, as well, my darling, for joining today. And uh, who else was here? And uh, Nick, Harry, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So anyway, um, go ahead and look for those topics. Up, uh, we'll put those up into the page. We got a couple of recipes, you know, for uh, house cleaning type of things. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And we will see you next week. So take care, folks. Bye. Bye now.